and this is Aladino. In mid-November, we converted our 28-foot sailboat into a riverboat, and we started going north, from the Mediterranean all the way to the North Sea. In front of us, we had 2,000 kilometers, 200 locks, an upstream current, and the onset of winter. Join us as we navigate the inland waterways during off-season. This is North Through the Continent. We're going north through the continent. Good morning. Headed out to the boulangerie this morning to grab some things for breakfast. Not the most atmospheric boulangerie I've been to, but they should have bread. Mmm, they had a deal on. I bought four loaves of bread, but I paid for three. I'm excited. I walked back along the charming road. Aladino had moved Magic Carpet to the fuel dock in preparation for filling up our tanks. Taking advantage of this rare occasion, because there's not often fuel docks. So we're going to fill up all of our jerry cans and our diesel tank so that we're good for quite another week or so on the river. Hmm, now I have to figure out how this works. 10 liters! We filled up our fuel tank and all four of our jerry cans for a total of 160 euros. We found we were using about 20 liters of diesel for every full day on the river, which is about 30 euros. The rain of the previous day was starting to seep into the river and bring heavier currents with it. Struggling a little bit? Yeah, wow, big current. I hate bridges. Always when there is bridges, sometimes somehow it gets narrower because of that massive, those massive concrete legs. Often bridges are built in the narrowest Yeah. So they do make you fight a bit more, or well, or boat but also, yeah, the one steering has to focus. But it is much warmer this morning. We're not bundled up in all our full weather Way gear, warmer. which Wind is great. Wind from the south. Wind from, from the, the south, north. yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, that's really nice. And actually we decided to take it easy this morning. We slept in since uh, we pushed on for the past week. We had the electric heater on and we slept till nine and uh, we got diesel and uh, so we have a short day to Tournon but now we still have to keep pressing till five probably uh, but yeah I think I'm confident we'll make it and we heard good things about Tournon so I'm curious We slowly approached the next lock. This was becoming old hat now. We had our preferred rolls. Aladino would motor the boat in, I'd stand on the bow and loop the bow line around the bollard, then Aladino would come forward and loop the stern line around, then would stand there, adjusting things as the water level rose. Only today, we ran into some trouble. Now, I'm not certain exactly how these locks are operated, but from what would observed, it seems like the lock operators have control over how quickly the water level rises. When small boats are in the lock, they typically pump the water in slower. This is because small boats can only tie to one bollard, since they're spaced too far apart to tie onto two. It makes it a bit difficult to control the boat in harsh currents when you're attached on only one pivot point. But this lock operator either didn't care or didn't have as much control as we thought. Remember they said this was The water came flooding in, faster than would experienced in any other lock. And suddenly I found myself unable to hold on to the bow line. Hold it. Hold it. I'm trying. It's okay. Just hold it. 
A strong whirlpool ripped between magic carpet and the wall, suddenly prying the bow away. From one second to the next, I found the rope slipping away through my hands. Just as suddenly, the whirlpool passed and we slammed back into the wall. The bimini had scraped along the wall and gotten a small tear, but other than that, no damages. But my heart was racing. I hadn't felt so out of control before in the locks. Next time, I'd take a double loop on the bollard. We motored out of the lock, a bit shaken. In my eyes, this river journey has been the most challenging but also the most rewarding voyage we've done with Magic Carpet so far. To tell the truth, when we planned it, I really didn't think that would be the case. This river journey was never our main goal, it was just a way to get to where we actually wanted to be, which was Northern Europe. It seemed like a good way to get there since we could do the journey in winter, so we could arrive in the North Sea just as the sailing season was starting. It also seemed like a nice easy way to spend the winter months on board Magic Carpet. How hard could it be? On a river, you're always surrounded by the comforts of land. You get to tie up somewhere every night. There isn't really swell or waves to worry about. Perfect, we thought. Plus, we had already traveled through the inland waterways on our way from Switzerland to the Mediterranean two years before. We knew that this time we'd be going upstream for the first 300 kilometers, but we didn't think much of it. We just figured it'd be slower. And it is. It's slower. But it's also cold, and occasionally nerve-wracking, and kind of desolate, with so many harbors closed and so many towns empty for the winter. And because of all that, because of the cold and the currents and the emptiness, it is also the most wonderful journey I've done on Magic Carpet so far. And before you say I'm crazy, hear me out. Any good book or any good film has some conflict in it, because when that conflict is solved, there's this incredible feeling of relief and satisfaction. It makes the story complete. A story with no conflict just sort of limps along. What is happiness when there's nothing to contrast it with? Here instead, in the river, we have the current, and we have the cold. We have empty harbors and locks that fill up like a raging waterfall in reverse. But every evening, I fall asleep with the most wonderful feeling of satisfaction. Even if I'm cold, even if we didn't make it very far, I fall asleep knowing that our story now has some conflict. And with that comes the sweetest resolves. anyway, 
In the grand scheme of things, this river journey still isn't that much of a conflict. Soon, the mighty Rhone will be behind us, and we will enter into smaller and more picturesque rivers and canals. We will see our families for Christmas, and then we will return and finish the journey in the spring, hopefully as the flowers begin to bloom and the earth begins to warm up once more. The resolve is coming, and in fact, as we neared the towns of Tournon and Tain l'Hermitage, it seemed to foreshadow all the lovely things yet to come. Tain Lemitage is renowned for its excellent wines, and when approaching from the river, you can see the names of its vineyards proudly displayed on signs in the hills, like the French countryside equivalent of Hollywood. Only instead of movie stars, here there's something even better wine. So I've now just arrived and tied up to the dock. Started to rain the moment we got here, so good timing. We can go inside and get cozy. And yeah, it looks like such a sweet little town. I'm so excited to explore more. Good morning. It's Saturday morning and apparently there's a farmer's market on in town, so that's where I'm going. It's been raining on and off all morning. There's some pretty dark clouds. And right now is a break from the rain, but it might start again at any moment. I just felt a few drops. I got some produce from the market, then walked home, stopping to look at the river on the way. It was flooding, and I could see all manner of things being washed downstream in the swift current, like this large drainage pipe that some construction site will probably miss when they return to work on Monday. So, at the farmer's market this morning, I got so much fresh spinach, and they sell this really dark, um, big leaf spinach here, and I just love it. Um, so I'm making one of my favorite spinach creations, which is spinach gomai, which is a Japanese dish. And all it is is you steam a whole bunch of spinach until it's soft, and then you make it into these little balls. And then the star of the show is a sesame sauce. So here I have tahini, so just, yeah, ground up sesame seeds, mixed with soy sauce and honey and water to make it a little bit creamy. And that's it. And then you drizzle it on top of the spinach balls and it's the most delicious and most healthy snack ever. Now onto the topic of less healthy snacks. We had heard that Tain L'Hermitage is home not only to great wine, but also home to an incredible chocolate factory named Valrona. Since the river was flooding too much to travel, we decided to take the day off and go check it out. There's way too many tastings here. Maya is already hyperactive and uh, <laughs> Bingo! After way too much chocolate, we walked home across the bridge. When we arrived back home, we decided to open a bottle of wine. I'll be honest, we didn't actually buy a local bottle. The Tain L'Hermitage wines are pretty pricey and we couldn't justify it, but we still celebrated with a fun French wine. 
So we are back on the boat after that chocolate experience, feeling quite over-sugared, so it will definitely be salad for dinner tonight. Um, but along the way, we also stopped to pick up a Beaujolais Nouveau. The reason why this wine is such a big deal and why we looked specifically for this one is because apparently it's a big thing. Um, that Beaujolais is a specific wine region and unlike you know the regions of Champagne and Burgundy and Bordeaux and like all those ones is Burgundy a region or is it just Bordeaux? I think Bordeaux is a region and unlike the regions of Champagne or Bordeaux or like those really famous and very fancy regions um, Beaujolais is just all about producing a whole bunch of wine for the common person and so they're good but they're cheap and they sell them all over and their trademark kind of is that they're one of the first wines to be released in the year because they are only aged like two months um, because the grapes were picked in September and they're released in November. So all over, all of the bars have Beaujolais Nouveau signs in the window and everyone's celebrating and they're always released on the third Thursday of every November and that Thursday is a big event. Uh, so it's a few days after that Thursday now but it's still a, a big event, the release of Beaujolais. So we thought we'd get in on the party and grab some. And yeah, I mean, I'm certainly no wine connoisseur at all, but it's a very fruity and very, um, flavorful wine like it's kind of a punch it's not sort of a delicate kind of flavor so yes that's what we're drinking this evening yeah i find it fruity and uh, light okay my it's wine very nice. here. not at all <laughs> That's our style, to be connoisseurs <laughs> about five euro wine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Once the river flooding went down, we cast off again to continue our journey upstream. We were nearly at the end of the Rhone. We expected to reach the city of Lyon in two more days, and from there we would start traveling up the comparatively smaller Saon River. But to see what happens in the final stretch of the mighty Rhone River, you'll have to wait for the next episode. Thank you so much to all of you for watching. Your comments, your likes, your subscriptions, they really keep driving the channel, and I really can't thank you enough for that. An extra large thank you to our patrons, without whom none of these episodes would be possible. You can become a patron for as little as $2 a month, and it helps us a lot. An extra big thank you to these folks who really go the extra mile to make sure these videos keep being produced, and we'll see you all in the next episode.